What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Do You Want More, a UFC stat show. I am your host, Monk, aka the Monkmetician, and let's get into breaking down some of these fights for the early prelims of this weekend's card, UFC 265, headlined by Derek Lewis and Cyril Gane. So, as I said, let's jump into it. Uh oh. There we go. I already had a mistake almost. Johnny Munoz against Jamie Simmons. First fight of the night. It's going to be at Bantamweight. Both of these guys have had one fight in the UFC. They're both dropping down to Bantamweight. They were at Featherweight. Uh, Munoz is 5'9", 71 inch reach. Simmons, 5'6", 70 inch reach. And it looks like Simmons is about five months older than Munoz. So pretty much the same there. Uh, professional record, Munoz is 10-1. 0-1 in the UFC. Simmons is 7-3 professionally, 0-1 in the UFC as well. Um, some of these numbers here, these career numbers, obviously I could do go outside the UFC for these numbers, um, but with the exception of a small handful of other numbers, all the rest is just from UFC, UFC statistics. I do not go outside the UFC um, promotionally for any other stats or anything like that. Uh, I don't even track uh, Dana White Contender Series fights if I can help it, so... Um, that's kind of where I'm coming from there. Anyways, these are career numbers. 72.73% of the time, Johnny Munoz's fights do not go the distance. 20% of his wins, he, uh, or 20% of his wins are knockout or TKO wins. Uh, 60% of his wins are subs, and he's never been finished for a loss. Uh, Jamie Simmons, 80% of his fights don't go the distance. 57% of his wins have been KO, TKOs. 14% uh, of his wins have been submissions. Two out of his three losses have been knockout losses, and one his one other loss has been a submission loss. So he has been finished 100% of his losses there. Um, let's get into some odds here, or actually some numbers. Johnny Munoz, his one fight in the UFC did go 15 minutes. His AWI, or ass whoop index, that's a stat I kind of created. Um, just how bad did you whoop your opponent's ass, or how bad did you get your ass whooped uh, per fight or over your career, basically. Zero is perfectly even even fight the higher the number the more ass you whooped the lower the number the more you got your ass whooped um so 6.86 that is going to be good for 20th in the bantamweight division uh power index you know how powerful are your punches he's never johnny munoz has never knocked anyone down with a strike so that's a zero chin dex is how often you get knocked down with strikes that's also a zero so uh very good there um, on the other side, Jamie Simmons did get finished, uh, in the first round, 3.85 minutes there. His ass whoop index, mine, negative 40.19. And I do believe that was a loss to Giga, yeah, Giga Chikadze. So he whooped his ass there. Power index is zero. Chin index, 12.5. No bueno. Not good there. So let's get into some odds here. Munoz opened at minus 150. He's now minus 242. He's got the fifth highest line movement on the card at 92, um, 92 points there. Fight doesn't go to decision. Minus 150 here. Uh, and Vegas thinks that he is going to win inside the distance. So some good numbers there. On the other side, Jamie Simmons plus 130 is what he opened at. Currently sitting at plus 194. So if you're a Simmons guy, you know, don't take that yet. It's going to keep widening. I have a feeling about that. Um, Notable performances, only one apiece. Nate Manis lost for Johnny Munoz. Giga Takatse lost for Jamie Simmons. So those are more of the notable performances, if you will. Uh, fight finishing data. This is uh, just UFC stuff. Not much to get into. Um, no finishes in Johnny Munoz's, Johnny Munoz's one fight. And Simmons did get finished. Uh, TKO lost there. So graphical analysis of that, obviously not much to look at there. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this thing, the striking data. So only one fight. So obviously on the left here, left two columns are total volume of the career. Uh, I'll be focusing more on the right three columns. So the middle column here is accuracy and defense. The uh, second column here is volume landed. Third column is volume thrown. So that's kind of where I'm going to be paying mo uh, most of my attention to. Now, we obviously don't have a ton of numbers here. Munoz obviously has more than uh, more volume than Simmons does, who has next to none. So take that with a grain of salt. 62% accuracy, 63 almost, for Johnny Munoz in his one fight. So that's good for third in the bantamweight division. Um, throws 5.2 a minute, lands 3.27 significant strikes per minute. So um, a little bit below average. Uh, on the other side, 
Simmons managed to land uh, half a strike a minute at 50% against Chikadze. So he only uh, two for four there. So nothing really to speak of. We'll drop down to defense for Munoz. 1.4 strikes landed against per minute. Pretty good there at a 58% defense. So right about average. And then Simmons got hit with 2.1 uh, strikes against per minute at a 50% clip as well. And I haven't done my tape yet, but one can only assume that the last strike Giga threw was, or Giga threw was a uh, Giga kick, that liver kick that uh, just makes people cry. So I'll have to do my tape still, obviously, but. Anyways, significant striking per minute differential, 1.87 for Johnny Munoz. Pretty good, pretty high, 11th in the bantamweight division. Uh, Simmons, negative 1.56, so towards the lower end of that. But he didn't get to really show any kind of skills in that uh, Giga fight. Knockdown data, nothing over here for Munoz, and Simmons was knocked down. That's why he has such a high chin chindex there, because Giga only threw 16 strikes, and one of them knocked him down. Takedown data. Two for 16, Johnny Munoz, 12.5, so not great. Um, oh, never mind. 0% takedown defense. Sorry, my head just got stuck there for a second. Uh, one of one, so he did not was not able to stuff the one takedown against. Um, he is throwing two takedowns per 15 minutes with one throw, or he is throwing 16 takedowns per 15 minutes. He's landing two. Um, so still not a bad number there. He did go for quite a few takedowns, uh, I guess. So yeah, 16 in that first fight. Um, Jamie Simmons, on the other hand, 0 for 3 takedowns. So that's a big old fat 0%. And he did stuff the one takedown uh, that Giga threw against him for his 100% there. So this might be a race to see who's going to throw the most takedowns per minute uh, at the end of this thing. We'll just have to kind of take a look. Uh, takedown shooting rate, 20% for Johnny Munoz. Wow, that is crazy. And my rankings must be screwed up here. I'll have to look at that. Um, takedown shooting rate, 75% for Jamie Simmons. So that is pretty crazy there. I don't know why they're both ranked number one, 20. Last time I checked 20 and a half is a little lower than 75. So I'm going to have to look at that on the back end. Um, opponent takedown shooting rate, 2% compared to Giga 6.25 is what Giga threw against Simmons there, but that's just because the short amount of fight time control time data. This is a good one to look at here. 65% for Johnny Munoz controlled 65% of that 15 minutes there. Great to see. That's almost just under 10 minutes out of that 15. Jamie Simmons controlled 19.5% of the Giga fight, which was less than a minute, but still not too bad. Um, 2.86 minutes per 15 minutes there. Uh, Johnny Munoz, just under 10% control time against. Um, pretty, pretty decent, huge control time gap there. And Jamie Simmons, 3.9% control time against. So giant differential here for Johnny Munoz uh, big big control time ratio get up time 89 seconds so not too good there for Johnny Munoz compared to nine seconds for Jamie Simmons but I believe he got up just to get uh knocked the f down so hold down time 36 seconds compared to 14 seconds for Jamie and then control time activity rate um that's kind of a stat I'm kind of workshopping here uh, with my help of my boy, Digital Monster. Um, he kind of helped me out figuring this one out. Um, that's kind of what you, what do you do when you're in control? If you're on the cage and you're in control, are you going for takedowns? Are you throwing clinch strikes? When you're on the ground on top in control, are you going for submissions? Are you throwing ground strikes, dropping bombs? Or are you just kind of sitting back um, trying to set things up, but not actually executing uh, as much as other people? So that number doesn't mean anything by itself. You know what I mean? 5.6. Like, what does that mean? But when you compare it to someone else, 5.45, and then you have the rankings here as well. Um, just from looking at the data, like a high number is, you know, over 10, 15, 20. That's when you start getting, you know, in a crazy good activity rate numbers there. Um, so as you can see, this 5.6 and 5.45, not too great. 48th and 49th out of like 70 fighters. So, you know, below average. Anyways, submission and reversal data. Munoz did throw a sub, did not get it, however. Um, never had one thrown against, and no activity for Simmons as far as subs go, or reversals, and no reversals for or against for Munoz. Now, advanced significant striking data. So I don't go through all of these. These are set up exactly the same way. The two left columns are just volume, career volume numbers. And in the middle, you have your accuracy and your defense. Uh, next column, you have your volume per minute. 
and then the last column you have your volume thrown per minute. So what I'm look for in these, instead of just looking at every number is I'm trying to compare, you know, I'm trying to see what jumps out at me, who's better at what, you know, who's towards the top of the division uh, at what. And on Simmons, I'll tell you right now, we're not going to have much for him. Obviously he's thrown like four strikes or something like that. I don't even remember. We could scroll back up, but you can just pause it and rewind if you wish, but he's thrown nothing. Uh, yeah, it says right here, four head strikes. So none to the body, none to the legs. So nothing crazy. Uh, Munoz is the same way, but it's, he's at least got 70 ish strikes anyways. Um, so I'm looking at accuracy defense. Nothing really stands out to me. Um, maybe the body strikes landed per minute second in the division, 1.67 for Munoz. Um, let's see how many he took Simmons took there 0.52. Uh, body strikes landed against per minute and if what I said earlier is correct the last body strike probably dropped him so might be a little uh have some PTSD on those on those body shots there is what I'm trying to say uh distance strikes landed against per minute Johnny Munoz first in the division so looking good from distance and Muno, uh, Simmons is towards the end of the division at distance strikes landed per minute but he's only had three thrown so that is the kind of thing I'm looking for here. So kind of take uh, what you want out of that giant block of statistics. And then there's a advanced significant striking percentages. So what are our guys target? So like we were talking about the body shots, turns out um, Johnny Munoz throws more to the body, more of a percentage of the strikes to the body than any other, other fighter in the bantamweight division. 51% of his strikes to the body uh, landed, I should say 46% thrown to the body. Um, other than that, he's not really a headhunter. That's kind of what I look for in this. Is is my is our fighter a headhunter, um, or does he kind of mix it up a little bit? Whereas Jamie Simmons, obviously only four strikes, but if he had more, this is just what I'm talking about. 100% of his strikes to the head didn't mix it up at all, but you know probably didn't have time to do much of that. Then you get your distance clinch groundwork. So very very mixed up uh, or diversified, I should say, for Johnny Munoz. Love to see that. Love to see that. I got to look at my rankings and wonder why these are tied, but. You get the idea there. Um, and then a graphical analysis of um, all those percentages. So these are going to be pretty plain for Simmons here. Uh, Munoz, you can tell, obviously mixes it up very well, distance, clinch, and ground. So you can see that there if you don't like looking at numbers like that. So the same thing, but just presented differently. All right, and now we get into the last five fight history. And we're going to skip this for this fighter because for the this fight because we don't have five fights in the UFC. We got one fight in the UFC. So all of these statistics are the same statistics we just talked about up top. None are different. There are eight blank graphs you're looking at, and those will be blank until unless the fighter has more than five fights in the UFC. Um, and I will get into breaking down what this all means when we actually have the data to do it. This is the last stat on this sheet that I go outside of the UFC to find. This is my strength of schedule stat. So, <coughs> excuse me, these are all the last five fights that these fighters have had if they're blank hna means history not available so it's completely clear after one fight for them in this case but they do have their one ufc fight right here with all of what i consider the most important statistics um including DraftKing points their last salary value ass whoop index our dkp is raw DraftKings points per minute um that's just your DraftKings points per minute that you scored without bonus points included so just from your action um, and right above that is the good one here, the strength of schedule. So we have the last five opponents pro record, 31 and 26 for Munoz, 63 and 33 for Simmons. So you're looking at these numbers, 54% is their last five opponents win uh, percentage. Strength of schedule, a lot of people call those things the same number. I calculate strength of schedule the same way the BCS does for NCAA football, um, but I just go to the last five fights. So I take the... Our fighter, in this case, Johnny Munoz, his last five opponents, their records, and then each of their last five opponents do my calculations that way, and I come up with my strength of schedule number. So that's telling you, you know, who the higher it is, the better caliber of fighter you've you've beat. By better caliber of fighter, I don't necessarily mean a better fighter, but all of the guys that he's beat say have winning record, you know, and all of the guys it basically says if you're fighting cans or not. That's a long way to go around to go about saying, Are you fighting cans? Um, your opponent's history, have they fought anyone that's worth a shit? Are your opponents fighting, you know, garbage, garbage fighters? Are they fighting good caliber quality fighters? So that's a long way of, uh, describing that there. strength of victory. 
same exact thing, but how, you know, the guys you've beaten, are they cans? Are they terrible? Have they beaten anybody worth their weight? Uh, strength of defeat is that, but the opposite, the guys that you've beaten, um, are they terrible or are they really good guys? So we get a sense of, you know, kind of our history and a couple of numbers here. So as you can see, red, bad, green, good. Jamie Simmons pretty much has the strength of schedule uh, advantage here. 10 points on the win percentage, five points on the strength of schedule, you know, almost 20 points on the strength of victory. The one thing Johnny Munoz has is the strength of defeat. Um, that's damn near a thousand. If that was a thousand, that means your opponents have never lost a fight. Um, so that's pretty close. 84 is also a good number, but you know, not anywhere close to 92 there. So trying to get a little bit of an idea strength of schedule wise, how we have that. And I will present that, um, maybe on my Twitter at Monk Maddox, uh, graphically as well. So everybody can see all the fighters on the cards, strength of schedule. So we'll skip past that, finish up this one, um, with a few graphs here. And I'm just going to explain this once and then we'll go through the rest of the fighters. Um, let's see here. Blue line. It's just a graphical analysis of breaking down a few different categories for our fighter. So solid blue line is our fighter. Uh, solid orange line is our fighter's opponent. The blue dash and the orange dash are trend lines. So over time, is our fighter trending up in this category or are they trending down? Um, solid green line is our fighter's average over the past five fights. Solid yellow line is our opponent's average over the past five fights. So basically, what you want to see in these graphs is the blue line above the orange line. You want to see the blue dash line trending up. You want to see the orange trend line trending down, ideally. But as long as the blue is above the orange, you're good. And then you want to see the green line, your fighter's average above the orange line, their opponent's average. So in this case, obviously we only have one fight here for each of these guys, but this is a good looking graph. This is what you want to see, you know, all the way across green above yellow, blue trending up and blue way above orange. On the other side, obviously only one fight, but it tells a completely different story. We have the orange, you know, it's the complete opposite. Our fighter, you know, there's no trend lines in this case because there's only one fight. So you're going from zero. Um, but the other lines are valid. Uh, no takedowns attempted for Jamie Simmons in that Chikadze fight. And then the control time here as well. So there it is, guys. Let us scroll back up. Now that we're finished with the Munoz and Simmons, we'll scroll back up and we will get into the second fight. Victoria Leonardo against Melissa Gatto. So this one... Um, we'll be pretty quick. Gatto has no UFC fights. I know it says one up there, but that's just because I have her in here just so she'll show up. She has no statistics. So all of these are going to be zero except for, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, here we are. The fights don't go to the distance numbers, that stuff. And then the strength of schedule. So we'll kind of get through this one pretty quick. Victoria Leonardo against Melissa Gatto. This is going to be at women's flyweight. Um, Leonardo's five, five, 64 inch reach. Gatto is 5'5", five, five, and last time I put her in, UFC didn't even know her reach. So we'll have to look at that later. Age, um, let's see. Gatto is about almost exactly six years younger than Leonardo. Leonardo, 8-4 and four professionally, 0-1 oh in the UFC. Gatto is 6-0-2, oh two, two draws, uh, and has not fought in the UFC. Fight doesn't, uh, let's see, two-thirds of Victoria's fights do not go the distance. Um, she does have a knockout. Uh, win in her career and she has two subs in her career so 50 percent or and actually four subs excuse me four subs in her career 50 percent of her wins have been submissions uh half of her losses have come by tko and one of them has been a submission loss um gato half of her fights do not go the distance no career uh ko wins and four submission wins and let's see yeah never been uh finished for a lot uh, never lost actually so there we go basic fight statistics uh let's see leonardo negative 23.38 ass whoop index there not great let's look at some odds this fight opened at both fighters minus 110 um got a 27 so we're basically uh basically uh even for leonardo here and then minus 123 currently for melissa gatto um minus 140 fight does not go to decision so that's that's interesting. We'll have to look at our, our tape there as far as that goes. Uh, notable performances, neither, none for Leonardo. She got knocked out by the beast, Manon Fioro. Um, 
yeah, not pretty there. Finishing data, 100% loss rate, just in the UFC. Striking data, 1.86 for Leonardo. Strikes landed per minute, significant strikes landed per minute at a 21% rate, accuracy rate. That is terrible. She throws almost nine, lands less than two. Just terrible. Um, 5.81 strikes landed against her per minute at a 47% defense, so not great. For a total, negative 3.94 significant strike per minute differential. That is not good. I don't have to really tell you that, but I really, I did look right into the camera and say that. Knockdown data, nothing. Takedown data, 0 for 1. Leonardo for 0%. 1 for 1 against, 0% defense. Um, she has a 1.23% shooting rate. One point, negative 1.64 takedown per 15 differential. So nothing much to speak of there. Control time, three seconds out of nine minutes uh, for less than half a percent. She was controlled 15.5% of that fight um, for very bad differentials, ratios, and total control time there. 85 second get up time. Uh, so not great. 30th. Uh, there's not even, let's see, 30th out of 38. Um, in the flyweight division hold down time second or two two seconds i should say good for 34th not great there control time activity rate this is a great number 180 first but then you realize you know remember i should say she only's had three seconds of control time so how hard is it to be in control for three seconds you know what i mean so don't pay attention to that number in this case no numbers for submission or reversals let's look at our striking numbers advanced striking numbers i should say towards the bottom of the division in most categories damn near every category towards the bottom of the division so that's what jumps out at me about victoria leonardo here um striking disbursement 41 percent of the strikes landed to the head 17 and a half percent strikes landed to the body 41 percent strikes landed to or leg strikes landed i should say so leg strikes match head strikes in this situation i do like to see that as you know I like to see uh, non-headhunter fighters out there. And, oh yeah, obviously nothing from Gatto. So yeah, I do love to see that. Love, love, love. Um, distance strikes, you know, 89%, 88% of Leonardo's strikes were from distance, landed. Um, no ground strikes. Take a look at this graph. Got there. Some good ones for Gatto here as well. Fight history, we're going to skip this. Only one fight. So we already talked about her numbers. Strength of schedule. Here we can talk about both fighters. Um, 26 and 8, Leonardo's opponent's record, so not much ex experience. Uh, 37 and 20 for Gatto. 76% win rate uh, for Leonardo. 71 strength of schedule. 68 strength of victory. 87 strength of defeat. So some decent numbers there. A little bit less than average in the middle, but rounds it out decently. Um, Gatto, uh, less of a opponent's win percentage less of a strength of schedule uh strength of victory is better um strength of defeat she has no defeats obviously in her career so that is going to be uh empty and we have not logged any fight it does show up here but that's just because i had her i have her name in the database ready ready to put those stats in baby go down to the graph here graphs look terrible for leonardo very very bad only one fight and obviously it was against manifioro uh she is a beast so you expect to see that hopefully we'll get some some decent numbers after this fight um but the graphs don't look good for her right as promised we flew through that one let's get on to our third fight of the night miles johns against Mel uh, melissa gatto that would be a little unfair probably miles johns against anderson dos santos this fight is at bantamweight miles johns five foot seven 66 inch reach Anderson Dos Santos, 5'5", five 70 inch reach. Uh, significant age difference here, just about, let's see, under nine years. Anderson Dos Santos is just under nine years older than Chapo. Um, professionally, Miles Johns, 11 and one. Uh, half of his fights do not go the distance. Uh, decent career knockout percentage, 27. 18% sub win percentage. Um, Every, everyone, all one of his losses, he uh, did get knocked out in that one. He is two and one in the UFC. He's got three fights. Anderson Dos Santos, 21 and eight professionally. So much more 
experience. 76% of those fights did not see the end. 23% of his, 24% of his wins have been by KO, TKO. 57% of his wins have been by submission. Um, he has been knocked out and subbed also. His UFC career record, or his UFC record one and two. So they both have three fights in the UFC. Good to compare that. Um, interesting. Total fight time is basically the same to the second. Uh, average fight time, strangely, is almost the same to the second. Ass whoop index for Miles John 1.77 compared to 0.42 for Anderson Dos Santos. John's with a 1.09 power index, which is really good. And as you can see, 14th. If you don't know what these numbers mean, look at the ranks here. This is going to be 14th. And you're like, okay, 14th out of how many? Like 100? Okay, well, look over here. And you're right in the middle column. This is how I know what weight class the fight is in. And right under here is how many of that weight class I have currently in my database. So right now I have 56 bantamweight fighters in the database. Might sound like a lot to some of you. It might not sound like a lot to some of you. Um, I don't think it's a lot. There are a f there are several more active fighters that do need to be added, um, but I kind of do add them uh, fight by fight basis, just so that way I can also look through the stats. So if you're wondering what the rank is and what to look at, that's 14th out of 56 bantamweights. So pretty good, pretty good. Um, Chindex here, 1.61. Again, 49th out of 56, so very bad. Compared to zero power index for Dos Santos and zero uh, chin in, Chindex as well. So let's look at some odds. This fight, John's opened at minus 200, second highest, um, second highest on the card. It is currently moved about 13 points it's minus 213 anderson dos santos plus 170 sitting now at plus 173 uh plus 135 this fight does not go to decision minus 165 the fight does go to decision so some notable performances there dos santos had a round one sub against martin day uh and then two losses so those are his three fights all in one there miles johns won uh one of his wins, round three, KO, TKO win over Kevin Natividad. And then he got a decision, split decision win over Cole Smith. Second round, TKO loss to Mario Batista. All right, fight finishing data. This is where we get into just the UFC finishes. So 50% of his wins have been, you know, he's finished one of his fights and he got finished in his one loss. That's pretty much what that says. And then uh, Anderson Dos Santos, one finish win, never been finished. So we have no UFC finishes either. There's a little graphical analysis, not very exciting, but uh, if it ever gets bunched up like this up here, that usually they're all pointing at zero. Um, same with this little group here. I don't know why it likes to do that, but it does. All right, and once we get guys with more fights, uh, those will be a little bit better to look at, more, um, more exciting, if you will. Uh, let's get into some numbers, striking data. Miles Johns, 2.66 strikes landed per minute at a 43% accuracy. So that is below average for the division. Um, I mean, yeah, it is, it's still below average. Anderson Dos Santos is even less than that. 2.66 strikes landed per minute. Actually, that's, sorry, that's not what I was looking at. It is a little bit less than Johns, um, but the accuracy is what I was meaning. At a 28.5% accuracy. So that is terrible. He's throwing 9.3 significant strikes per minute. He's landing, you know, just over two and a half. So that's pretty bad. Uh, let's look at some defensive numbers. Very good for Miles Johns. 1.8 strikes landed against per minute at a 76.25% significant striking defense. That's good for first in the division. That's 76. Um, across the aisle, 4.8 landed per minute against Dos Santos at a 55.26% defense. So that is below average defense there. Um, I love seeing these defensive numbers from Miles Johns, especially when he's fighting against a guy that has volume numbers like this and accuracy, offensive accuracy numbers like that. Not good, not good. So we have a positive differential here for Johns, 0.87. So not great, but he's you know above above zero. That's what you want to see. He's landing more than he's getting hit. That's what you want to see. Um, whereas Dos Santos, you know, towards the very bottom of the division. Minus 2.14 significant strikes landed per minute differential. So he's getting popped on pretty uh, pretty consistently. Knockdown data. One knockdown for Miles Johns in the UFC career. 0.43 knockdowns per 15. And he has been knocked down once. 
for that same rate as well. No knockdown data for Anderson Dos Santos. Takedown data, Miles Johns, not good. 11% accuracy. Um, but Dos Santos here, the ground, you know, the ground jujitsu fighter, uh, is wrestling takedowns need work apparently 18.75 so not great there he is winning the offensive takedown battle but it's against two guys who have abysmal numbers um especially dos santos like no actually no their rates are about the same dos santos is throwing seven takedowns per 15 he's landing 1.3 so no bueno that's a lot of a lot of wasted energy that's what i see when i see those numbers i see a guy that's gonna get tired especially against a guy that has an 85.7 percent takedown defense he's only allowed one out of seven um so that's fantastic takedown shooting rate 4.2 for johns that's pretty high 17th um but it's not as high as anderson dos santos who's like i said seven attempts per 15 minutes uh Takedown differential, zero for Johns, and a positive differential of 0.43 for Dos Santos. We'll get into some control time data. Let's see here. 17% control time for Miles Johns does get controlled for almost 25% of the fight, though. So that is a bit worrisome. On the other side, we have a positive ratio. Uh, Dos Santos, 20.58% control time compared to 14.31% control time against. So pretty close but it is a positive positive differential that's what we like to see um get up time for miles johns not good 73.57 uh with a 39 second hold down time and those numbers are a little bit uh better on the defensive side for dos santos 49 second get up time 26 almost 27 second hold down time there and then control time activity rate since we do have some control time here these numbers you know, compared to like Jamie Simmons in that fight or the Leonardo fight, these numbers actually do mean a bit more, but they are still pretty low for the division. 4.39 and 5.90. So it would it would seem that Dos Santos is a little bit busier when he's in control, uh, but not by much. And that's just statistically, like we still have to we still have to tape these fights, but this is just what some numbers are telling me. And they don't tell the whole story, they just tell a part. Uh submission and reversal data, nothing uh for miles johns he does have a reversal so we know he is capable of that submission uh two attempts for dos santos and nobody has tried to throw a sub against him um sub attempt rate ninth in the division but a 0.62 percent no reversals against advanced significant striking data what are we seeing here we're seeing great defense from miles johns as we talked about uh before there and then we also see well, only eight for eight leg strikes, but 100% accuracy in leg striking. Um, pretty good distance accuracy numbers. Distance defense, 79.75. Fantastic. So some really good defense and a couple of good offensive numbers as well. Um, for Dos Santos, we're in the 50s, 40s. You know, body accuracy, that's pretty good. Um, but when you look at the volume, you're not seeing much there. Uh, on the other hand, volume-wise, we are seeing some pretty good numbers from Johns. Again, especially in the defensive side. So let's go on down to some striking percentages here. Uh, Miles Johns, third in the division. Um, hunting for the head there. Significant strikes landed. Well, let's just look at thrown. Head strikes thrown. 90% of the strikes Miles Johns thrown, throws are to the head. 91.5. Um, does not target the body much. Does not target the legs much either. Um, but Anderson Dos Santos, same deal, man. 88% strikes thrown to the head doesn't throw many body shots they're pretty much even and then leg strikes he throws double what miles johns throws but what's double of like next to nothing it's pretty much next to nothing then we'll go down to the graphs here and as you can see what i just described most strikes are from distance most strikes are to the head uh in both cases last five fights we're skipping this as well these guys don't have more than five fights and we'll get on to strength of schedule. 70, almost 78% win percentage for Miles Johns. That is pretty, pretty good. He has the better strength of schedule all the way around, and it's not really close. Uh, it's a decent number. 74 strength of schedule, 78 strength of victory, and then an 80 strength of defeat. So you love to see these numbers. And Anderson Dos Santo, it's average in the 70s, but the low 70s. That's average. You, you want to see, you want to be over 75% minimum. I'd say anything above 80, you're pushing really good, you know, pretty good. Then once you get into the 90s, like if you're Kamaru Usman, you're just on another level. But 
I cannot wait to break down that Kamaru Usman Colby Covington fight. You talk all the shit you want about Colby Covington. I'm a huge Kamaru fan. I don't enjoy Colby Covington's antics uh, or the things he says. That said, statistically, this is one of the greatest rematches that's ever happened. Like, I'm super excited for it. Uh, I almost want to just stop what I'm doing and break it down now. But the numbers on these guys from the first fight and even their careers, it's it's crazy. They're literally like first and second in almost every cat. It's it's nuts. Usman does have the advantage almost everywhere on Colby, but it's close and both sides are crazy numbers. Did I skip something? Uh, I did. So last five, uh, oh, we already talked about that. Here are the uh, last three fights before I got off on my tangent of dream fights. I want to see Colby get his face smashed in. Um, so yeah, let's go down to some graphs. Uh, Miles Johns has a pretty good striking graph here. This, these trend lines are crazy, crazy. I know there's only three fights, but striking way up, but the strikes allowed are also way up. Um, but the green's above the yellow. We're looking good there. Takedown's not looking too good uh, for Miles Johns. Control time also needs some work. Bull Smith put it on him. Um, and then pretty much nothing on the other two. On the other side, Anderson Dos Santos. Striking, as we could probably uh, predict, was going to look like this. Takedown graph looking really good. Trending up. And then control time graph. This, this is looking fantastic. Obviously, only three fights. Sharp, steep, I should say. Trending up. Trending upwards of the blue line. Uh, green above the yellow. Looking great there. All right, guys. Let's scroll back up. We got one more early prelim to go. <laughs> And I'm kind of excited for this one. Manel Cape against Ode Osborne. Uh, this is going to be at flyweight. So Manel Cape's 5'5", 68-inch reach. Um, Ode Osborne, who has been fighting at featherweight, is going to drop two weight classes um, and fight this fight at flyweight. So 5'7", 73-inch reach. I'm expecting him to be much bigger in this fight. Uh, Southpaw versus Southpaw. Uh, let's see here. Osborne is just under two years older than Manil. Uh, professionally, Cape, 15 and 6. Uh, he's 0 and 2 in the UFC. 76% of his fights did not see the end. 60% of his wins have been uh, KO, TKO wins. 33% submission wins, and he's never been knocked out. Been submitted, what's that? Twice. Two times submission losses. Uh, Ode Osborne, 9-3 and three professionally. He's 1-1 one one in the UFC. 83% uh, of his fights did not go the distance. 44% career knockout wins. 44% of his wins have been by submission. Never been knocked out, and he has been also been submitted twice in his career. So both these guys catching uh, some submission losses. Let's see here. Much different fight time compared to... Uh, or much different, I should say, 30 minutes of fight time compared to three. Um, so we don't have much much statistical uh, information from Ode Osborne in the UFC. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping this fight kind of gives, gives us some of that. I, I'm not going to say I want it to go the distance, but I hope we get some volume here. Minus 233 ass whoop index from Mono Cape. Uh, Ode Osborne. A little bit better, but not great. 0 0.68. He is positive. Ass whoop index there. Um, and this is based on flyweight. So as you can see, there's an extra number here. I should say that. Uh, I have Manel in at in my database as a flyweight because that's what he's been fighting at. Uh, Ode Osborne has been fighting at featherweight. So that's what I have him in my database as. Until this fight is over, he'll then be logged as a flyweight because that's what his last fight was at. But there's an extra number here. So I have 28 flyweights and there are 71 featherweights in my database. So I'm just trying to give you um, an idea of who's where. But all of these rankings, I did just change these. All of these rankings should be in the flyweight division. So at least we can compare the numbers. Um, let's get into some odds. Actually, we skipped uh, the power index, zero and zero chin uh, index, which again is good for Manuel Cape. Uh, Ode Osborne, 7.14, huge power index. That's good for first in the flyweight division. Zero chin, chin index, also good for first in the division. Uh, odds, odds, odds. Minus 200 was the opening line for Mono Cape. Currently sitting about the same. Plus 170 for Ode Osborne. Uh, currently he is at a plus 165. 
I might have got him at plus 170. I'm not saying I put a unit on him or anything, but <clears throat> anyways, fight doesn't go to decision minus 115. Fight goes to decision minus 115, so uh could go either way according to Vegas. But the huge favorite is Monocape. I personally think that line is too wide. I'm not trying to get into too many uh, odds in this show. But that is a super wide line from a guy with very low fight IQ. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. So Alexander Pantoja was uh, one of Cape's losses. And then uh, Mat Mateus Nicolau was his other um, Ode Osborne did knock out Jerome Rivera. Not a big deal. I don't even think he's in the UFC right now. Uh, did catch a, or did get subbed rather by Brian Kelleher in the first round. So got his ass whooped and then whooped some ass in his two fights in the UFC. Fight finishing data. This is just UFC statistics. 100% um, for Ode Osborne, but that's only two fights. 0% for Mono Cape. Again, two fights. Striking data. All right. Mano Cape, 3.67 significant strikes landed per minute at a 45.6% accuracy. On the other side, much better numbers from Osborne, 4.31 landed per minute at a 70% accuracy. So that is really good. However, keep in mind the volume, 14 of 20. He's thrown 20 significant strikes. That's it. But he's only had three minutes in the UFC. So keep that in mind before we start going, before I start going, oh man. So maybe I'm just talking to myself here. 4.3 strikes landed against per minute for Mano Cape at a 48.6% significant striking defense. So below average numbers there. 2.77 uh, strikes landed against per minute at a 40% defense. Um, also not great numbers from Ode Osborne. Differentials, negative 0.63 uh, significant strikes landed for Mano Cape plus 0.1 or 1.54 um for Ode Osborne that's good for fourth in the flyweight division knockout data nothing for Cape one knockdown for Osborne good for 4.62 knockdowns per 15 minutes in his very very short time in the cage uh never been knocked down in the UFC takedown data not great Mano Cape two of seven takedowns finished um throws three and a half per 15 landed one um, he did stuff eight of 10 takedowns, however, for good for 80% defense. You do want to see that, that high takedown defense. I do love to see that number. 2.9% shooting rate, 3.98% shooting rate for his opponents, but they're only getting it at 20%. So we'll take it. Ode Osborne never thrown a takedown, uh, stuffed one of two. Opponent takedown shooting rate, 13%. So one of, we'll get into, we'll see one of his opponents tried to shoot several times it looks like or you know maybe not it is a very small sample size um but a huge negative takedown per 15 differential there just based on that one takedown control time data 3.5 percent for cape not good 9.72 percent pretty good but does get out controlled um and then we look over here and ode osborne just gets killed in this category three percent control time 10 seconds um or not even 10 seconds 0.1 seconds which is what six seconds uh control time against 60 percent so not good mm, you know 17.5 seconds get up time for cape 59 for osborne but on the other you know nine seconds hold down time that's nothing for cape but osborne never had a takedown um again a huge control time activity rate don't put any stock into that because he literally controlled him for six seconds um 11 over here so that's pretty good but again just over a minute of control time for cape in his fight submission and reversal data none no submissions no reversals actually yeah they've each had a submission um a, attempted against cape defended it ode did not he did get submitted in that fight um significant striking data can't put much stock into osborne we don't have a lot of numbers for him either of these guys really but significantly more volume for cape um so we are seeing pretty good numbers out of here you know top 10 in a few categories um, body striking accuracy, leg striking accuracy, distance striking accuracy. So a few good numbers there towards the middle of the pack, uh, for volume. So not too bad. Um, a little bit lower numbers here for Osborne, as far as defense goes, uh, and, or as far as accuracy and defense go. Um, but the land landed per minute against, there's a few numbers again, uh, head strikes landed per minute against decent in the division. 
body strikes landed against per minute, all that kind of stuff. Distance strike landed against per minute, third in the division. So pretty good defense out of both of these guys here. Advanced significant striking percentages. Let's see. Oh, we'd love to see this. Mono Cape, 42% of the strikes that he, uh, or nope, I got ahead of myself. 81% of the strikes he throws are to the head. Nine, almost 10% to the body, and then 8% to the legs. On the other hand, 100% of the strikes thrown by Odie Osborne were to the head. <laughs> so there you go. 45% of those strikes were in the distance, and half were on the ground. So there's a graphical representation of that. As you can see here, 64% of the strikes Ode Osborne has landed have been ground strikes. I assume, unless he, you know, grounds and pounds Mono Cape immediately, that that will change a little bit. Fight history, last five. We're going to skip that. Strength of schedule. Here we go. Look at this. An average to, to above average for Mono Cape, you know, 76, almost 77% win percentage. Um, 76 strength of schedule, 71 strength of victory, 85 strength of defeat. So decent, decent numbers there. And then on the other side, Ode Osborne's opponent have a, have a losing record. Strength of schedule is barely above 50. Strength of victory is 50. Strength of defeat is 65, not even. Those are terrible numbers, terrible numbers. That's the one thing, um, that I'm kind of hesitant on about putting that unit on Ode Osborne was this strength of schedule numbers, but. I did tape this fight, and I am pretty comfortable that that, wine, that that line was pretty wide. Anyways, let's scroll down some of these graphs here. Mano Cape is getting beat uh, pretty much everywhere, it looks like. Um, but he is trending up. So when you see the gold line above the green, you don't like to see that. But you want to see your guy trending up. He's definitely trending up in his two fights. So if we can keep that up, our graphs are going to be reversed here pretty soon. Um, Ode Osborne, same thing. Two fights. But he's trending way up. We do have a green above an orange, above a yellow here in the striking. Um, takedowns, no takedowns. I doubt he's uh, going to be throwing too many of those ever. And then Brian Kelleher really messed up his graph there <laughs> by taking him down uh, in that short amount of time. And then uh, Ode Osborne, again, control time percentage, got controlled by Kelleher massively. Um, and nothing much to show offensively for control time in that one. All right, guys. So that is going to be the statistical breakdown for the early preliminary fights for UFC 265. Please join me for the next episode. I am going to be breaking down, you guessed it, the prelim fights. We have four more fights to talk about. Um, and then by the end of the day, hopefully I will have the uh, main card out as well. So lastly, I'm so glad that you stuck with me to watch this whole thing. I'm glad that you got your uh, all the statistics you could ever want. You're so full of statistics. You're like, no more numbers. Do me a favor. Don't don't watch any. Don't look at any more numbers. Don't even think about numbers. But do your fight tape, guys. Watch your fight tape. You have to. These these statistics are secondary to taping the fights. This is supposed to be a great complement to all of your fight study, all of your tape study. So make sure you get that done. And who doesn't like to watch fights? If you're watching this, you like to watch fights. So go have some fun and watch some fights. Do your tape study. Come on, man. Get it done. Make some money. Take money from the bookies. Win your DraftKings tournaments. Let's get paid. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.